Hello everyone, this is my uh, video unboxing and review of the ASRock FM2 A88M Extreme 4 Plus motherboard. Uh, if you've come across FM2 Plus motherboards from ASRock, you've probably noticed the Extreme 6 Plus ATX motherboard, but this is the younger brother or the little brother of the 6 Plus. It's the 4 Plus, which is a micro ATX motherboard and uh, it comes with some great features it hasn't skipped out on any features as compared to the 6 plus except for the four gpu slots which is the pci express slots uh, instead on this motherboard you have very very similar features you've got the standard fm2 plus socket from amd as well as you've got the a88x chipset which is the uh, latest chipset for the AMD APUs, one that I've got here, the 7850K, which I'll unbox later. Uh, this motherboard also supports AMD Crossfire, and I'm not talking about the uh, dual graphics configuration where you set up your uh, APU graphics with the X, uh, what is that, discrete graphic card. I'm talking about two discrete graphic cards on the same motherboard. Yes, we have two PCIe slots here, uh, one's the PCI Gen 3 X16 slot and the other is the PCI Gen 2 X16 slot uh, which you can still cross fire but and I'm not very sure if there's going to be a performance drop because of the difference in generations but I don't think there will be. Um, we have HDMI, DVI and VGA on this motherboard and there's something about the VGA port on this motherboard that I really like and I'm going to talk about it when I'm unboxing it after a couple minutes. Uh, first we'll take a look at the box. Uh, as, as you can see here, we've got a home cloud feature by ASRock. I'm, I'm probably interested in what home cloud is, but anyways, uh, the more important features we've got listed here. We've got the Micro ATX form factor, Socket FM2+, Plus, which supports both the Socket FM2 as well as the Socket FM2 Plus mother uh, APUs. Uh, we have also got DDR3 20, 2600 megahertz support, which is pretty good because uh, with APUs, the faster memory you have, the better the computer performs. So if you have uh, 2600 out of the box, that's going to be brilliant. I'm going to be using 2133 megahertz on this particular build, which I'm doing. Um, but if you've got faster memory, yeah, you can you can probably pop that in here and it'll work no, no problem. Uh, as I said, we've got one PCIe 3.0 slot uh, X16 and another PCIe 2.0 X16 slot. Apart from that, we've got a PCIe 2.0 uh, X1 slot and one legacy PCI slot, 7.1 channel HD audio, uh, as well as we've got a LAN card, a LAN chipset from uh, Qualcomm, which is pretty surprising because you don't really come across motherboards with Qualcomm LAN chips. Uh, we've got four USB 3.0 ports, two for the front and two for the rear, as well as 10 USB 2.0 ports, six for the front and four in the rear. Um, now when we open the box, we've got the standard I.O. shield, I'm going to set that aside. We've got two SATA cables and the interesting thing about these SATA cables is one comes with a 90 degree bend here, the 90 degree connector, which is pretty helpful when you're connecting that to the motherboard, uh, obviously because the SATA ports on the motherboard face upwards and I'm going to show you that when I'm doing the build. Uh, we have a installation guide the quick installation guide which I don't think anyone reads. Um, we've also got the ASRock driver disk with the ASRock motherboard sticker in there. Now obviously you won't be using the driver disk, we'll be downloading the latest drivers from online. So I'm going to set that aside as well. And this little manual, okay this is a warranty card, um, this little manual here is actually an explanation of the Ace, A, uh, ASRock home cloud and a few other uh, cool features from ASRock. Uh, we've got remote desktop, which is a new feature on most of their uh, motherboards, which fancy the Qualcomm LAN chipset. Uh, what that basically does is you can control your desktop using your phone, an Android or an iOS device, uh, from anywhere in the world. You can just switch it on, switch on your device, uh, download some data, probably delete some files, and maneuver it that way. And that's a pretty good feature, and I think most uh, manufacturers should start in know incorporating that it's it's pretty cool and here we have the motherboard itself it comes in an anti-static bag as to all motherboards these days I'm just gonna set the box aside or actually I'm gonna place the motherboard on top of the box so we can have a better look 
You should though be careful with the anti-static bags because uh, before you handle your motherboard, it's important for you to have no static charge on yourself. So I'm just gonna touch my case for now. Uh, touching the case is a good sign because it's grounded and any static charge from your hands can just get grounded. Yeah, so we'll get rid of the static charge, get the motherboard out of the anti-static pack. And there you have the motherboard. Now, as I said, this is the micro ATX form factor. Now, what's cool about this motherboard is it's got this beautiful matte black PCB. Now, I'm a huge fan of black PCBs because I, I believe that the blue PCBs, the days of the blue PCB ended with the socket 775s and this motherboard looks pretty good. Uh, we've also got a back plate over here right behind the CPU socket. Uh, now, apart from that, let's go into a few of the features here. We've got the FM2 Plus socket, which I mentioned earlier. Now, you can run your FM2 APUs, no problem, which consume about 100 watts, as well as the FM2 Plus CPU, APUs, sorry, which consume 95 watts, 5 watts lesser, more power, power efficient. Uh, we've got dual channel DDR3 memory. And now, D DDR3 is, uh, I know now it's pretty outdated, but since DDR4 is not here yet, I guess it's fine. Uh, dual channel meaning four slots. As I said before, this one can natively support 2600 megahertz, which is really, really, really fast memory. Uh, we've also got dual PCIe Express slots, X16, which are for your graphic cards. This one's the Gen 3 slot and this one's the Gen 2 slot. Uh, both of them can be used for Crossfire. Please note that you cannot SLI on this motherboard. So if you have two NVIDIA cards, I'm sorry, but that's bad luck for you. Uh, here's the PCIe X1 slot. This is the battery for the CMOS. Here's the PCIe Legacy slot. Uh, it's not PCIe, it's just PCI. Uh, now, apart from that, when we take a look at the SATA cables, SATA connectors, we've got four of them facing upwards. The other four face a, a 90 degree angle towards this way which is pretty cool and you can use the flat cables here and your 90 degree cable as well can help. Um, apart from that, when we're looking at the I.O. on the motherboard, as you can see here, we've got the HD audio, uh, we've got an Ethernet port, we've got two USB ports, USB 3.0, HDMI, and this is what I was talking about. Small things like this is what make a difference. When you have a VGA connector, with this, which is blue, it looked pretty awkward on my motherboard. Now, I don't like seeing motherboards with a blue block over here for the VGA. Instead here, it looks pretty clean with a silver on top. And you've got a black colored VGA connection here and your DVI and your other ancient stuff. But there you have it. There's the standard motherboard. Um, everything else is pretty pretty standard actually on this board. Uh, we've got the power connections. We've got a CPU. We've got two CPU fan connectors, one with four pin, one with three pin. Then we've got the power for the fan, which is the three pin. Then we've got the uh, eight pin connection for your C for your APU here. And apart from that, everything else is pretty standard. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have our APU, which is the A107850K sitting on top of this. And uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna test some stuff. We're gonna see how this motherboard performs. We aren't gonna overclock right now because I haven't uh, got a good CPU cooler yet. But once that's done, I guess we'll get some overclocking and some benchmarks on that as well. Uh, in my opinion, this is a pretty good motherboard for the price. And although it's a micro ADX board, we've got a ton of features on this. Very similar to the um, ASRock Extreme 6 Plus. So I guess that's the motherboard review. And there's a pretty good motherboard for anyone who's considering buying it. Uh, I'll also show you the motherboard uh, when I'm building it, when I'm building the rig. So the rig assembly will have the motherboard and I'll put the APU inside and we'll show you how it's done. Thank you for watching my review.